I'm MC Tune, and it's Tuesday night, and we have a very special, different than usual, uh, debate slash uh, challenge set up here. It is between Ruhif and Refracted Curvature, who goes by uh, John, or John, who goes by Refracted Curvature, however you want to say it. Uh, welcome, guys. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. It's It's evening here. Good evening. Time My travel. apologies. And John, how are you? Um, I'm hanging in there, I guess. All right. How well, are you doing? I'm great. I'm excited. It's uh, it's hot, and I'm in an air conditioned room, so I got no complaints there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll give a, a a quick overview of what we're gonna do here, and how it came to be that we are doing this. Uh, so, uh, John, a, a while ago, you, you issued a challenge. I'll play it here in a second. Um, to debate anyone, anywhere, they get to pick the platform, the moderator, the topic. And uh, so here is just a little clip of you saying that. That's why I issued my challenge the way I did. You know, I'm willing to debate anyone, anytime, anywhere. And they can choose the model I'll defend. And they can control the mute button, choose the moderator, whatever. But they have to choose a model. And they can even choose mine. So that was on Nathan Oakley's show. Uh, Ruhif accepted. This is the place. I'm the moderator. And now is the time. The topic is, as uh, Ruhif chose, which model does celestial navigation work on? John agreed to show and uh, in, in, our, in the conversations with Ruhif and in the DMs between the three of us to show by way of demonstration how celestial navigation works on flat earth Ruhif will do the same for the globe. Specifically, each of them were given a set of elevation angles, and they are, they are to demonstrate how celestial navigation works on their model. This is about showing how your model works. If you cannot get the position fix, you can see that your model doesn't work. If you get the position fix, you show that your model does work. Ruhif and John, this isn't a debate where claims are made by words. This is a debate where action happens. Get a position, fix, or lose. Six days ago, I gave two sets of measurements to both John and Ruhif in this group chat. I gave John the first option to choose which set. He didn't choose within 24 hours, so Ruhif chose a set. I've published these sets on my website at mctune.net slash C-E-L-N-A-V, cell nav. Uh, you can download the zip files. There's two zip files. They're encrypted, and after each presentation, I will publish the uh, decryption key. So they're already done. You can download them. You can confirm that the decryption keys uh, de um, decrypt the file. I sent these to PJCNet, who's in the chat. He will also share them and confirm that the de decryption keys uh, were sent beforehand. Uh, PJCNet is a flat earther, by the way. Other than myself and potentially PJCNet, um, that's the only people that know the, the solutions. So uh, you can de you can download them now and decrypt them after the fact to verify. So that is, that's the introduction. And we're going to go right into it here. So Ruhif, let's imagine that you've secured work on a ship. In your application, you wrote that you're skilled in celestial navigation. You have been at sea for a while and there's been a storm for a few days. The electronics were damaged in the storm. And the ship's location is unknown. The captain remembered your application, so has handed you a sextant and asked you to get their position. Nothing matters other than getting the accurate fix. Lives are on the line. Get it wrong, get lost at sea, and you die. So, to you, Ruif. Me. Uh, I pre-recorded my presentation. Um just because I could. So I'll just ask MC Turn to play it. That's right. pretty much it. And here it goes. And, and, and basically it will go through why things only work on a globe. So All right. roll VT. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is why celestial navigation only works on a globe. Okay, so here is my set of observations for the debate. Uh, I've been given an eye height of 32 meters and an index error of two arc minutes. 
Uh, and my three stars are Akinar, Beetlejuice, and Canopus. Uh, and here are the angles and the time that they were taken. Uh, now, the first task is to get the GP of each of these stars at the time of the observation. Uh, and GP just stands for geographic position, uh, or sometimes people say ground position. And all the GP is, uh, is the point on Earth where the star is directly overhead at that point in time. But before we dive into the almanac, uh, we need to understand what the almanac is actually giving us. Uh, so here we are looking down on the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, uh, and at the same time, the Earth is rotating on its axis. Uh, and what we normally consider a full day is the time between local noons. So local noon is just the time when the sun is in line with your line of longitude. Uh, and that time is what we've arbitrarily defined as 24 hours. Uh, but as you can see in the diagram, uh, because we're in an orbit around the sun at the same time that we're spinning on an axis, uh, then the Earth needs to rotate just that little bit extra to point back at the Sun. Uh, so a solar day is actually a little bit more than 360 degrees of rotation. Okay, a sidereal day uh, is slightly different. A sidereal day is 360 degrees of rotation. So instead of the time it takes to point back at the Sun again, uh, it's the time it takes to point back to a distant star. Uh, in much the same way that we've arbitrarily decided that Greenwich Observatory is the prime meridian for the Earth, uh, we've also arbitrarily decided that a particular star in the constellation of Aries uh, is the prime meridian for the celestial sphere. So the purpose of the Nautical Almanac uh, is to map the prime meridian on Earth to the prime meridian of the celestial sphere. Uh, and then the positions of all the navigation stars are given relative to that celestial sphere. So we look up our almanac on this particular date, uh, and this will tell us exactly where each star is on that date. So the time of this observation was 5.48 and 12 seconds. So we just need to interpolate between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, and just notice that each uh, each hour is not exactly 15 degrees, uh, and that's because of what I said a minute ago, uh, that a 24-hour day is actually slightly more than 360 degrees rotation, uh, which means that one hour is very slightly more than 15 degrees. Anyway, if I interpolate the time of the observation between 5 and 6 a.m., I end up with a Greenwich hour angle of 19 degrees 7.8 minutes. Uh, and that gives us the relationship between Greenwich's prime meridian and the prime meridian of the celestial sphere, uh, which is that star in the Aries constellation. Uh, so on the right hand side of the page uh, will be a list of all the navigation stars. And we just need to grab the, the sidereal hour angle uh, and the declination. And that tells us where the star is on the celestial sphere. And now we need to translate that into a latitude and longitude. Uh, so in this diagram, we're looking down on top of the Earth, and we've lined up Greenwich at our 12 o'clock position. So from the previous step, the Greenwich hour angle is 19 degrees and 7.8 minutes, and we rotate clockwise to get this orange arrow. Uh, then we apply the sidereal hour angle of 335 degrees and 21.8 minutes, and we end up at the yellow arrow. Uh, and that yellow arrow works out to be five degrees and 30.4 minutes east of Greenwich, and that's our longitude for the GP. Uh, and as for the latitude, uh, there's no need to do any translation. You just grab the declination for the star, which in this case is 57 degrees and 7.1 minutes south, and that is our GP. All right, so obviously we follow the same process for the other two stars, and now we have all three GPs. So step one is complete. All right, next step uh, is to apply the index error correction. Uh, and the index error is just the, the calibration error in the instrument itself. So it's not really that relevant to this process. Uh, in any case, let's add two arc minutes to our measured angles. Uh, and as you can see in the table, the next correction we need to apply is dip correction. Uh, but before I use any citations for dip correction, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm using a respected source. Uh, so here's a short clip of 10th Man discussing the American practical navigator. All right, so this is uh, 
continuation of more research. The American Practical Navigator, an epitome of navigation, the Bible of celestial navigation, and every mariner has this. The fallers and anti flat earthers told us to get this book and read it so we can get our heads on straight. So I agree that I bought four copies, different years. Well, thanks for that ringing endorsement, 10th. Uh, This book is so well regarded that it's actually carried on board every U.S. Navy vessel. Uh, And the section on dip correction is full of interesting tidbits. Uh, If I had time, I'd probably read the entire page. Uh, But the main things to take away from this are the dip of the horizon is the angle by which the visible horizon differs from the horizontal at the eye of the observer, uh, which they are calling sensible horizon. And that's the angle that we're correcting for. Uh, It also acknowledges that we have a density gradient and consequently the ray of light from the horizon to the observer's eye is bent by refraction. Uh, It even explains that uh, the horizon is further away than it would be if there were no refraction uh, and it appears higher uh, because the eye of the observer does not detect the curvature of the line of sight. And it also says that the amount by which refraction alters dip varies with changing atmospheric conditions. Uh, And last things on this page are the two formulas, uh, the one on the left, which we're going to derive in a minute, and the one on the right, which is an approximation. All right, so let's just quickly run through that formula that we saw on the previous page. Uh, So remember that the angle we want is alpha, uh, and it's formed by B, A, C. Uh, And this angle beta uh, is simply 90 minus alpha uh, because the observer's horizontal, which is BA, uh, is by definition at right angles to the observer's vertical, which is AO. Now, the line AC is tangent line to the horizon, uh, which touches the surface at point D, uh, and the tangent to a circle always makes a right angle to the radius at that point. Uh, And that makes... A, D, O, a right angled triangle, and we already know two of the angles. So from step one, uh, alpha plus beta is 90 degrees. Uh, Then we know that this angle formed at the center of the earth is also alpha, which is our dip correction. All right, and step three is to do some really simple trigonometry. Uh, So the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent, which is the radius uh, over the hypotenuse, which is the radius plus the observer height. And that's our formula. Uh, But I guarantee you that all the flurfs are having aneurysms right now because that line AC that touches the horizon at D is a straight line. But isn't it refracted? Yes. Yes, it is. If we wanted to model refraction on a globe Earth, uh, what we would do is have a circle with a radius of 6371, uh, and we'd model the light rays as a circle as well, uh, but with a much bigger radius. Uh, And that radius of curvature for the light ray uh, is something in the order of of 40,000 kilometers. So it's a big radius, uh, which means it's not curving very much. Uh, Now that number of 40,000 isn't something that I've just pulled from my rectum. Uh, it actually comes from directly measuring the vertical density gradient uh, and has nothing to do with the shape of the earth whatsoever. Uh, But that's a whole video in itself, uh, so we'll just take it as a given for now. So you can see here in GeoGebra, uh, I've drawn the earth in blue with a a radius of 6371 kilometers, and I've drawn the light ray in green uh, with that big radius of 40,000 kilometers. Uh, I've also centered it on the horizon just to make the geometry a little easier. Uh, So if we wanted to calculate the distance to the horizon and incorporate refraction, uh, we could stick our observer somewhere on the left uh, such that his eye height uh, is on the green line and then work out the arc length uh, between him and the horizon. Now, it's certainly possible to do that geometry with the two circles, uh, but it's fairly difficult. Uh, So you know what would be easier than doing geometry with two circles? Uh, it would be a lot easier to do the geometry if there was only one circle, that being the Earth, and one straight line, which is the light ray. So what we do uh, is a very cool little geometric transformation uh, where we straighten out the light ray, uh, but most importantly, we have to keep the relative curvature 
between the two circles at a constant. So if we straighten out this light ray, this will have the effect of making the radius of the Earth bigger to compensate. Uh, and if you want to understand this visually, I've, I've modeled it in GeoGebra, and you'll see that as I move the slider, the light ray flattens out completely. But because we have to keep the relative curvature the same, then the radius of the Earth needs to get bigger to compensate. And this is how we get 7 over 6R. Uh, it's just a geometrical transformation that takes two curves and turns them into one curve and one straight line. And this allows us to draw a straight line tangent to the horizon, but we just have to do it with a bigger radius. Anyway, so back to our formula for dip correction. Uh, so on the previous slide, we talked about the 7 over 6R radius multiplier. Uh, well, 7 over 6 equals 1.17, uh, but the Nautical Almanac uses a slightly larger radius multiplier of 1.2. So instead of using a radius of 6371 kilometers, we use a radius of 7645.2 kilometers. So for our observer height of 32 meters, we work out a dip correction of 9.946 arc minutes uh, using that formula that we just derived. I've also plugged it into the approximation formula uh, and you'll see that we basically get the same value. So 9.94 arc minutes. Uh, what I found quite funny though, is that the dip correction table in the Almanac uh, gives a figure of 10 arc minutes rather than 9.9. .9. Uh, even though it says explicitly that the numbers in the table were calculated using that approximation formula. Uh, super weird, but we'll go with 10 arc minutes for our dip correction. Uh, the unfortunate news for my FLIRP opponent though, is that if he wants to use the dip correction values from the Almanac, he's going to have to accept that they were derived from the Earth being a sphere and that refraction was incorporated. Uh, or of course he's welcome to come up with his own geometry for flat earth dip correction. Okay, almost done. Uh, so the next correction we need to make is for refraction. So now that we've corrected for horizon dip, uh, the angle we measured with the sextant is now relative to horizontal. Uh, but we still need to correct for the fact that the light from the star has also traveled through our atmosphere to reach our eye. Uh, now the fact that there is a refraction adjustment at all uh, is a little bit of a problem for my opponent because he's of the opinion that an angle requires two straight lines. Uh, but in the real world, uh, we know that the path that the light takes is curved and we just make a correction for it. Uh, because if you remember back to the dip correction page from the American Practical Navigator book, uh, it said, for the eye of the observer does not detect the curvature of the line of sight. So the refraction correction is the calculated angular difference between the apparent position of the star and the actual position. That is the difference between the angle at which the light comes into the lens, which is this projected line of sight, and the angle at which you would observe the star if there was no atmosphere, uh, which would be a straight line between the sextant and the star. In any case, the formula that calculates the refraction adjustment is given by the refractive index of the air at the surface, minus one, all divided by the tangent of the elevation angle. Uh, we don't have time to go through the derivation for it, but just be aware that this is only an approximation because it ignores the curvature of the atmosphere. Okay, now the refractive index of air at the surface varies, uh, but the typical value given is around 1.000280. Uh, and if we plug that into our formula and convert it from radians into arc minutes, uh, we get the formula at the bottom which is 0 0.96 divided by the tangent of the elevation angle. So for Akinar, we get half an arc minute. For Betelgeuse, we get 2.4 arc minutes. And for Canopus, we get 1.2 arc minutes. And if we compare it to the values given in the Almanac, uh, we can see that they are pretty much correct. So Akinar was 63 degrees. Betelgeuse at 22 degrees and Canopus at 39 degrees. So now we've made all the necessary corrections. All we need to do is add them to the measured angles to get our true elevation uh, or true altitude. Okay, so the next step is to work out how far away over the surface we are from the GP based on our elevation angle. Uh, now I'm sure you've heard two phrases thrown around before. 
and they are minus from 90 and 69 miles per degree. But where do these come from? And what is the geometry that explains them? Now the minus from 90 part is pretty simple. We've got our observer at the 12 o'clock position here again, and he's measured an altitude angle to a star, uh, and we'll call that angle alpha. Uh, obviously in this diagram, the red dotted line is the observer's horizontal, and the black dotted line is his vertical. So they are perpendicular to each other, so the complement to that angle alpha is angle beta. Uh, so beta is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. And that is where the minus from 90 phrase comes from. Uh, most flat earthers think it's a right angle triangle between the observer, the GP and the star. And that's just not the case. The, the minus from 90 has absolutely nothing to do with the GP. It's simply giving us the angle beta, uh, which is called the co-altitude. And that's the angle that we really need when we're doing celestial navigation. So tools like a theodolite uh, can measure the co-altitude angle directly because it's on stable ground, uh, can easily, easily establish a, a vertical reference. Uh, a marine sextant, on the other hand, is presumably on a boat that is rocking around on the ocean, so it can't establish a stable vertical. And that's why it uses the horizon as a reference point and then adjusts that angle up to horizontal using dip correction. All right, anyway, where do we get 69 miles per degree? Well, that comes from the fact that the stars are an enormous distance away such that the light coming from the star is arriving at the observer and at the GP in parallel lines. So those two yellow lines are parallel. What we can do is move that angle beta down to be at the center of the Earth. And now what we have is a sector of a circle. And that's how we'll work out the distance over the surface between the observer at S and the GP at G. So let's say the, the altitude angle that we observed was 60 degrees, which means our co-altitude angle beta is 30, uh, and therefore the angle it forms at the center uh, of the Earth is also 30 degrees. Uh, so what is the distance between the observer and the GP? Well, that's just the proportion of the whole circle. So if our angle is 30 degrees, then that is 1 12th of a 360 degree circle. So the arc length of that sector is simply 1 12th of the circumference of that circle. Pretty easy. Uh, and the circumference of a circle is obviously a function of its radius. So let's plug in 3959 miles as a radius. The circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, which is 24,875 miles. And 24,875 miles circumference on a 360 degree circle is 69.1 miles per degree. And this linear relationship between the angle and the distance from the GP is derived from the Earth being a globe and only if the stars are very far away. So one of the big challenges for my opponent is to show the geometry for his model that justifies this 69 miles per degree. Okay, so you can either use the 69.1 miles per degree or 111 kilometers per degree, uh, or like I've done here, use 60 nautical miles per degree. And that will give you the distance you are from each of the GPs. All right, final step, uh, and this part really is the nail in the coffin for Flat Earth. Uh, the final step is drawing circles of equal altitude. And a circle of equal altitude is simply the set of all points on the surface where the observer would measure that elevation angle to that particular star. Uh, and the observer could be at any point on that circle. So in this example on screen, uh, let's say the GP of the star is over Louisiana, uh, we need to find all the points on the surface that are, for example, uh, 1,000 nautical miles away from the GP. The question is, what formula am I going to use? The Haversine formula. All right, the Haversine formula determines the great circle distance between two points on a sphere, given their longitudes and latitudes. Important in navigation, it is a special case of a more general formula in spherical trigonometry, the law of Haversines, that relates the sides and angles of spherical triangles. 
In fact, more correctly, I'm going to be using the inverse Haversine formula. So the Haversine formula gives you the distance between two known points, uh, where the inverse Haversine, uh, you give it a latitude and a longitude, and then you tell it a distance and a bearing, and it will tell you the coordinates of where you will end up. Now, I would like to plot my circles in Google Earth, uh, but the built-in circle tool on Google Earth actually uses a slightly different formula called the Vincenti formula, uh, which takes into account the, the slight oblateness of the Earth. Uh, but the correct formula for celestial navigation is the Haversine, so I ended up writing some Python code uh, to draw my circles for me. Here's what it looks like in Google Earth. Uh, and where these circles intersect is my position fix. So this is it, zoomed right in, uh, just so we can see how tightly these three circles intersect. So my position fix, uh, which looks to be accurate to within about two nautical miles, is 31 degrees, 11.1 .1 minutes south, 15 degrees, 36.9 minutes east. And just to finish things up, uh, I'll repeat the questions I had for my opponent during this presentation. Question one, what is the geometry that justifies dip correction on a flat earth? Question two, why is there a refraction correction in the almanac if angles require straight lines? Question three, what is the geometry that justifies 69 miles per degree on a flat earth? And question four, on what map is my opponent drawing his circles of equal altitude? Hey, that is, uh, that is Ruhif's, and uh, he's off screen now. So you see two of me for a second. You like me to turn my camera on? Sure, sure. <laughs> there there you go. go. Um, all right. So your position. Let's see. Could could you send it to me, and I will. Uh, oh, hang on. I will just uh, uh, look on the last frame or the second last frame of the video. I guess. Well, I, can you? Uh, so that I can type it. I don't want to. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I want to. I want to copy paste. So uh, the actual Was. position, I'll put it in the uh, the chat. Make sure it's the right one here. Yep. Is negative thirty one point one five and fifteen point five. There you go. So I'll put that in. To right here. This is an application of the Haversine formula, as you mentioned. So we'll see how far your position is from uh, from the uh, the correct answer. So do I, do I have to type that? All right, hold on. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Deeply sorry. We got thirty one. 11.1 minutes. Got 15, 36.9. Does it take? There it is. 11 kilometers off. Meh. Not bad. That's about okay. six nautical miles. Yeah. And so Next. I will show you, uh, let's see here. This is, here is the, uh, on a globe, this is what it looks like. These uh, these points here are the, the GPs of each of the three stars. So there it is off of uh, the, the coast of uh, South Africa there. And so there's the three stars. So that's what it looks like in... Uh, there you go. And similar to yours, there's just a tiny little crooked hat. So there you go. All right. So you are uh, a mere 11 kilometers off, uh, six nautical miles about. So, all right. I'm disappointed, MC Toon. Disappointed. Oh, just you, <laughs> you, you wanted to be closer? Yeah. At all least right. I live. At least you, I live. You, I'm going to survive. You survive. So yeah. good for that. All right, so now it is. Uh, so I, I would call that a success. The the captain of the ship is is happy, and uh, you will you will get back to to port. Uh, Great so. job! That was that was excellent. Good job.
All right, John, uh, I'll read the same thing to you. Uh, John, you have secured warp work on a ship in your application. You wrote that you are skilled in celestial navigation. You have been at sea for a while. There have been a storm for a few days. The electronics were damaged in the storm, and the ship's location is unknown. The captain remembers your application, so has handed you a sextant and asked you to get their position. Nothing matters other than getting the accurate fix. Lives are on the line. Get it wrong. You get lost at sea and you die. Yeah, um, I like I said when I put this challenge out there, I I concede he he got it. Good good job. Like, uh, it's, but the problem is he invoked about, my about, model five times sorry, when he was doing John, it. John, this is this is your chance to to do the fix. Plane. This is your chance yeah, to do the fix to get the fix. I understand. Nothing but matters. He invoked my model. Nothing. He invoked no, no, my model John, five times. The John, special. I'm sorry. Is nothing like, matters other than getting the fix lives are on the line get it wrong you get lost at sea and you die this is your chance right. to present how to do celestial navigation for flat earth as you agreed in the debate challenge where he chose the topic the topic is to show how celestial navigation works for your model so go right ahead right and he did that when he invoked the celestial sphere model but this Let's is your 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 model. model this is your chance to show how yeah, your that, model works he did that he did that he he act he demonstrated admirably. No, it's it's this isn't Earth about his works. this isn't about his presentation. Now this is your chance to show how flat earth does this. Go ahead. Your, oh, your I'm chance. not arguing with how it was done. I'm pointing out that he used a flat plane model to do it. It's sorry, this is your chance to show how your the so the 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 angles that I gave you that are specific to you, how that works and the position that uh that that your ship is at so it's a different set of angles well as my stipulation goes i i said i would concede to everything and i would limit my rebuttals to that required a flat plane and that contradicts the celestial sphere model so i'd like to answer his questions that he asked Okay, no, no, but first of all, that that's a concession that it doesn't work on flat Earth. Yeah, you you no, conceding that it doesn't work on flat Earth. That's incorrect. You used the flat Earth model. And Go you ahead. Invoked it five this times. This is your chance, John. Five. Your times. chance to show how it works. Go ahead. Well, your he chance. just demonstrated. No, no, no. How it this is your chance to show you. You have different exactly angles. Different angles that I gave you. So it's your chance to show how it works. For he just utilized earth. it on a flat plane. Like, why Why would I need to? He just used my model to demonstrate. No, That's I'm sorry. He, this is your chance to show how it works for flat earth. I gave you different angle measurements for you to show he, how it works. So go right ahead. He used the celestial sphere model, which no, is, this is not about me, John. It's not. This is it's not, it's not about me. It is a oh, celestial sorry. sphere John, model. Uh, is a flat plane model. John, John, you agreed that you will show how it works on flat earth. That's the agreement that you agreed to, John. So if you don't yep. show and how he it did works, that it's not about his presentation. It's about you showing how it works. Now, you, if you're agreeing with him, I, I, I want you to understand that he used the radius of the Earth multiple times. And if you are agreeing with him that you, well, you, you need the radius of the Earth, then then you well, are that's, completely that's ditching Flat comes. Earth, one hundred percent throwing it away. And I do appreciate that, no, John. No, that's that's incorrect. You're you're missing it. Oh, he did not use the radius of the purpose. Earth. Well, the parts where he used the radius of the Earth were applied incorrectly because he was contradicting the model that he was using well, to so, get so the measurement. This with. is this is not a chance for you to say words about his demonstration. This is a chance for you. To show how your demonstration works, John. You well, need to show how the, the measurements work in a flat for plane him. model. No, he didn't, John. This is nothing to yeah, do about his presentation. The celestial sphere it is, is a flat one hundred percent about your presentation. You agreed to show how it worked on flat Earth. That's the stipulation of this. And exact he did challenge. that admirably. No, I told he, you no, I was going to make all your the concessions chance. you wanted. To show how it demonstrated works for flat it on Earth. a flat plane. No, I'm sorry, he did not he do used that. the celestial sphere model five the times. The celestial that I sphere counted, is a sphere. And I missed quite a bit of it. A concentric sphere around the globe. There's no there's no concentric sphere around flat Earth. I don't know what you're talking about there, but it doesn't matter. No, you no, agreed to show how That's... celestial navigation works 
for your model and you have specific <laughs> uh specific numbers he used my model for why would you. i need to do that no, no he didn't why use would i your need model. to do that he used my model he used my model the celestial sphere model is a flat plane model he used that he didn't I use mean, a flat plane model. It admirably he never he used a great. flat plane but john please yeah, please did. which step the of, celestial of the celestial sphere model is a flat plane model you're saying that a sphere necessity, is a plane he used my model Whoa. Hold on a second. You are saying that a plane is a sphere. No, the celestial sphere model has a flat plane that the angle measurements are derived from. Oh, sh oh then show the geometry of that, please. Go ahead. Yeah, share your screen and show the geometry of that. I've done that in my kitchen. Go ahead. This is your chance. Okay. Um. I did that in my kitchen. Hold on, let me pull, I, a, let me get a video for you. I believe I left a comment on that video. Something along the lines of you've demonstrated perfectly why celestial navigation doesn't work on flat earth. Congratulations. That roof, if this is this is his presentation. No, we'll get to the No, I demonstrated that the, the we'll get, just a I second, John, the John, angles. John, just a second. Ruhif, <laughs> okay, this is, this is John's turn to do his presentation, and I'm just trying to get him to do what he agreed to. There will be a question and answer what discussion agree, between you and John. I already in a laid second. down the parameters of I would I would stick all of my responses to and I would concede to everything. I'm pretty sure I said that. I concede to everything. Go ahead. You're using a flat plane model. Right, go ahead. He demonstrated a flat plane model. Present, present what did. part of his. Why do, show why do I need to do of, anything? John, just show what point. part of his presentation Faith used closed, a flat proved it for me. John, just show the part of his what? presentation that used a flat earth. Go ahead. The celestial sphere model that has a flat go earth. Go ahead. Just show it. it. Yes. Show it. Yeah. Go ahead. Just Not just words. Just, just look it. it up. Go ahead. Hold on. I'll get a picture of it. All right, we're waiting for the. Uh... Ooh, I need some of this. So, uh, <clears throat> like, like I said, I I will read some of the uh, the agreement. Let's see here, we have some some screenshots that uh, Ruhif Ruhif got um, talking with John here. Uh, the challenge is, which model does celestial navigation work on? Right? Uh, uh, let's see. You, you, uh, you, you asserted that angles require straight lines, which is a very strange thing, because uh, I, I would need to see the geometric proof for that. That's the definition of an angle. Why would I need to? <laughs> Are you seriously? Yeah, you you would need to show the geometric proof that you can't hit, measure an angle to a curve. <laughs> I gotta show you that an angle is a straight line. Yeah, because I can show you the geometric <laughs> proof that you can, but uh, it's on you to to support that claim. It's on me to prove that an angle is two straight lines. No, okay. and that you cannot measure In an every angle definition. to a curve. Yeah. What? Is, what? Say that it's, again. It's on you to show that you cannot measure an angle to a curve if you're going to make that claim. But uh, anyway, this, oh, no, this no, is no, uh, this is about. I, I want to be clear, John. This <laughs> is your chance to show, as you agreed, how celestial navigation works for your model, and there are specific uh, numbers that I gave you, measurements that I gave you to to do. What, why would I do that when Ruhif did it so admirably? I don't so get it. You've, he used you've the said, model of a flat plane. You've said over and over again. Yeah. So you I'm said not, I'm not without supporting I'm not a evidence. Jumping through hoops, man. Come on now. Well, you agreed to this, and so far you have not done what you agreed to. He demonstrated it. I knew he was going to. All I had to do was let him do it. Do, why would... do what? <laughs> you, you've claimed that he did that. All right. Well. I put uh, he used the celestial sphere model five times. Anybody that's watching this, just go look up the celestial sphere model. For <laughs> that's that's all he did. He used the flat plane model of the celestial sphere. All right. Well, for people following along at home, I have the since you you failed uh, and your entire crew is dead. 
I put the the links there. So I'll I'll show I'll show. Failure. I told you I conceded to everything. Yes, right. what you are did. You're yes. not listening. To I I, yep. I did. I said you can have it all. Yeah, but you, you conceded. Uh, all right. Uh, so angle is... still requires two straight lines all right, all right. and a flat baseline. All right. right. So, well, those I are quite unsubstantiated. But here that was a stipulation of the right. debate I here put is... out. Here is and you uh, all accept it, right? Just a second, John. Uh, since uh, I'm going to, and then you demonstrated gonna, it using the celestial second, sphere, which John. is my model. Calm That's a down, flat John. plane model. Hold on, John. Hold on. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not excited. This I'm is gonna, hilarious. I'm going to share going this with to it. you so you can see. All right. Here is and everybody sees it at home. There is the one that John, or sorry, that Ruhif did, and he got the correct location. He used the GPs of each of the stars and plotted it on a globe. This is what Ruhif did. Right here. Can I can I give the answer for uh, John's? Uh oh yeah. Yeah, Valparaiso in uh, Chile. Nailed it. So here is, right here. There is John's, and again, this is plotted on a sphere. You'll see, there's no that's flat beautiful plane. cartoon image. There's no it? flat plane here. But see, well, but here's what happened, that's John. That's a projection this, of the celestial sphere. So you've that's set. a projection of the flat Earth onto a celestial sphere. So you've and then set. you're reifying it into a globe. That's all so the globe is. Set. All you've it's done is say things. You've not demonstrated anything. That it has been projected you... onto the celestial sphere. But John, and your opinion doesn't all matter. To say. You're, it's, you're, it's not you're opinion. At, that's what you're in Davy Jones' locker right now. I'm in Davy but, Jones's locker. All right, no, I, I never got. Yes, you are. All right, so I will hand it over to Ruhif now. To uh, since you you failed to demonstrate, no surprise. I mean, nobody really surprised at that. But I'll, I'll hand it over to Ruhif and you to, uh, to have your did, discussion. Go ahead. He demonstrated yeah. it for me. Why do I have to demonstrate anything if he did? If he used my Ruhif, model to if do it, wanted to show okay. it, so to share. You you said that you would concede anything. Are you going to concede that it doesn't work on a flat Earth? You use the flat Earth elevation angle measurements. You use and the flat Earth how it's done. Sphere model, and now you want me to concede that it didn't work on a flat Earth? So you want yeah, me to say it I, didn't work, what you just did? I didn't use a flat Earth. That is your opinion, right? You need to it's show not an opinion. that it works you did. on a flat you, you used the celestial sphere model over five times when you were talking about elevation angles and getting your fix. Yeah, we're very clear. If you can't get a position fix, you lose the debate. You did not get a position fix. You have lost. What? Okay. You used the flat earth model five times and you're like, and I lost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you're incorrect. That's okay that you're incorrect. It's you okay. That you're incorrect. I'm correct that you yeah. used a flat earth celestial sphere model five Which times. Is incorrect. That's fine. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, what you obviously came here to discuss elevation angles and celestial sphere models. So, right. like I've asked you multiple times in All right. the DMs. Right. Yep. Yeah, I asked you whether your issue is with angles requiring straight lines. Is that the issue, or, or angles to the horizon? Can you please elaborate? Well, when on when you were asserting your dip angle correction that you're reifying this sphere that you were projecting up onto the celestial sphere, you said dip angle correction several several times. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is you're figuring out the differential angle from a 90 degrees to your vertical that you call your eye level and a 90 degrees that is the ground in the celestial sphere model that buys that, that, that celestial sphere. And that celestial is where the angle model. is measured from. That is the flat plane you dwell atop. Hold on. The that celestial. differential, if you map that differential, you can reify it into a geometric position, but it's not. That's what, when you say refracted, that means it's not a geometric position anymore. Hold on. When you said celestial sphere model, right, it has nothing to do with measuring an angle, literally nothing to do with it. So please, navigation please start again. has nothing to do with measuring an angle. No, I literally that? said getting an elevation angle has nothing to do with the celestial sphere model, right? Not that celestial navigation has nothing to do with the celestial sphere. Please don't put words in my mouth. All right, so we're no, getting an no. elevation angle. The, the celestial what does the sphere celestial sphere model have to do with that? The celestial sphere is derived from the angle measurements. Off no, no, we're, we're, we're starting at step and then one. The celestial sphere utilizes that flat plane 
to put those angles into a model so you can use an arc minute to find your position on a flat plane. We're starting at step happening. one. We're starting at step one, getting an elevation angle. Right? Nothing to do with the celestial sphere model. What is your issue with getting a, an elevation angle on a globe? Okay. Well, why don't we take the sextant out of it? Let's go back yep. to, um, say, Eratosthenes, right? Right. Sticks and shadows. Did he get an elevation angle of the sun with those sticks yes. and shadows? Yep. He did. What was his baseline? What do you mean his baseline? He got an elevation angle. His baseline would be a two, piece, of, piece of wood. What was, okay, his hypotenuse would be from the tip of the shadow yep. to the top of the stick onto the sun, right? That line, yep. right? On, yep, onto like a piece of wood or something, sure. Okay. And what was the baseline that that angle is derived from? That would be is horizontal. The earth? It'd probably be a piece of wood or something. Just whatever his horizontal is, he's established a horizontal. So his, his well, he, base he piece of a, wood would be perpendicular to his stick. Okay. He well, the story is he used a, a one of those phallic objects that <laughs> no mon a no mon no the uh, uh, what was the it, it's got a name and I'm it's just. I'm losing the name. Of it, it. it doesn't matter. Call it a stick. It's fine. Right. Yeah, it was like a 40 foot tall stick, but he was just using the ground as his flat baseline to get an angle. Okay. Was, was it relatively flat? Relatively flat. Okay. Yeah. So it's flat. What was the ground that he did this measurement on? Was it relatively <laughs> flat? How many flat spots are on a sphere? We have terrain, so there are lots of mountains. They're not very flat. No, you're talking about Earth again. No, right? Confusing geometric question, and then you're you're throwing yeah. His, his angle it. would need to be measured against a horizontal. His stick would be the vertical, and he would have to measure uh -huh. the angle with a horizontal. That does not mean the surface uh, is flat. Well, the horizontal he used was the surface. Yeah, and how flat was he? Was he in a mountain? <laughs> like, how no, flat was the that. ground? Okay, check mark. But like, what, what are you going to argue past on that? I'm asking how flat was the ground? If the ground was bumpy, then his actually these measurement would be not as accurate as it would be. Right, you're you're confusing the topography with geometry, right? The establishment of the baseline with the topography right. and, and confusing the two, right? right? Yeah. So he, he measured an angle, an actual measurement. He measured an angle, right? Angle with a, like that, right? He measured an angle with a forty-foot pole. You said, and he measured um, something no, like I think seven it was, degrees. I'm trying to think of what they call them. I, I the think it's a gnomon. Yeah, no, I think it was an obelisk in the story. I'm okay. not exactly sure, but okay. it was pretty so big, measured, right? So he and measured it was, you know, a long shadow, right? No, it wasn't a long shadow, but seven it degrees. No, because he only measured like seven degrees. So if, if you so look that if, shadow increases, right, as the day progresses, right. does that mean you're not getting an angle when the shadow's longer? You would have to adjust it to horizontal. That's the point. If you ground the horizontal from where? From the obelisk. You have to establish a horizontal at the obelisk. Right. To okay, so that's the why where the angle is taken, right? From the obelisk, yeah? No, not from the obelisk, from the tip of the shadow. Yeah, the, so we have to, we have to establish the horizontal from the obelisk to wherever the shadow lands. And if the, the land two metres away is at the same approximate level as the obelisk, then you're fine. So you're asserting there's just a flat area on Earth. It's just flat. It's geometrically we have flat. Terrain. Right? We have terrain, right? Uh -huh. are, are you asserting yes, we should we be able to see? That's, a that's a topography argument. That's meters. not a geometry argument. Like right. you understand the geometry, the topography yeah. and geometry, right? Yes, the geometry requires that he establish a horizontal at the obelisk, and then two meters away, if if required, adjust that up to horizontal, if the ground is below or above it. So he just didn't take an angle. 
He took an angle. And on a flat plane. He, he measured the angle relative to the horizontal. On a flat the Horizontal plane. at the obelisk. No. No. The horizontal yeah, well, established at the obelisk. So he didn't get an angle. He got an angle. He established an angle. He got an angle. He established a horizontal at the obelisk. And presuming not that the, the same, which is not the same as getting an angle from the tip of the shadow. Why? Why? Because those in your what you're asserting is those two horizontals don't match. So you're not getting an angle. Right. But that way. on a globe, right? You're two meters away. How much do you think those horizontals will differ by? Two so meters you have away. A How super much flat globe. Right. <laughs> okay. This is Can two it, meters, right. John. Two meters well, let's away. break this down. Let's break this into a two-dimensional view, right? Say your sphere, right? And you're saying that it's tangent at the point of intersection between the curved line, your vertical, and the horizontal that you're saying is not the ground, right? Correct. The horizontal okay. is at the obelisk. That belief that you just stated is con contradictory to the celestial sphere model. What the hell does because the celestial sphere model have to do with getting an model? Hold on. In that same model, there's a horizon. So when you when you take that curved earth and put it at the point where the angle's taken, you can no longer say that the horizon is a geometric tangent point. When you move that out and do what you did to say that there was a huge earth and straighten that line out, then you're asserting you're taking your your angle from a curved baseline. We're, we're literally on the ground measuring the angle between some shadow on the ground and the top of an obelisk. What on earth does the celestial sphere model have to do with that? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that the assertion that you're making now is contradictory to the celestial sphere model. Well, it, it's but for probably, it to be an angle, it must be a straight baseline. It's probably it to contradictory to your understanding flat. of the celestial sphere model. That's probably correct. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's a flat plane celestial sphere model. Right. Horizontal. Right. Eye level. Horizontal. Eye level is a yeah, eye level is a flat plane. The surface is not a flat plane. So when he took that measurement of an angle with the obelisk, if the sun would have been lower in the sky, that wouldn't have been an angle because the baseline would have been curving. But where it was only two meters away, it's an angle because the baseline's curving, but not enough that it matters, right? Yeah, two meters away, assume it's flat. It's not going to make much difference. So if the sun is two degrees above the horizon it's not two degrees above the horizon because that's not an angle it's still an angle but you are measuring it relative to the horizontal at the obelisk and if the terrain is is different to that horizontal then you will need to adjust it no you're not measuring it at the obelisk you're measuring it at the point where the shadow touches the ground right to the obelisk. and is that point and on the horizontal. horizontal is that point on the horizontal at the obelisk. If you're asserting that the baseline's curved, then you don't have an angle. The <laughs> shadow, the shadow, you do have an angle from a curved baseline. You need to demonstrate that. The, the angle definition is measured. Of angle is the two lines meeting at a vertex. Okay. That's yep. The, definition the, the baseline of that is the horizontal at the point of the obelisk. The, the opposite side, if you want to call it that, is the, the obelisk itself. And then the um, hypotenuse is the, the shadow being cast. But that point, that point where we're getting the angle has to be on the horizontal that's established at the obelisk. And right. if it's not, then you so need to adjust plane. it. Eye level flat or plane. horizontal. A flat plane. Yes, eye level or horizontal is a flat plane. The surface is not a flat plane. Stop right. confusing that the shadow. Surface. That shadow, the flat plane, is cast on a flat plane. That's how you get it's an cast, angle from. It's cast on the topography of the ground. Which is a, well, the topography is not a flat plane, but right. the baseline that you utilize at that angle is a flat plane, which is the earth. Eye level, no, it's not the earth. It's horizontal at the obelisk. That is the flat plane. Eye level is a flat plane. Horizontal mm -hmm. like is a flat I said, plane. The surface is not a flat plane. Two degrees above the horizon, 
right? The angle the shadow casts, right? Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't be able to get an angle. Yes, you can. You wouldn't be able to assert two degrees because then your baseline at the obelisk and the tip of your shadow is no longer uh, so close that you would assert it a minute ago that it's doesn't matter. Is no the longer point, two degrees. Is the point of that shadow on the horizontal line established at the obelisk, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Well, then that's the end. That's, a, that's your elevation. It's a angle. flat earth. That's a no. flat earth. Yes, it's a horizontal you're just, plane. You're just you're asserting just that the Earth is flat. Is that no? You said the, the shadows on the horizontal plane that the obelisk at the obelisk's bottom. It's the straight line right, out, which, which is not the surface. The ground. Yes. The horizontal plane is eye level or just perpendicular to vertical. It is not the surface. The surface has topography. The surface. The horizontal plane. Have, yes. the horizontal plane so is just. A mathematical hypothetical construct. Right. Yes, that's my yeah. point. Okay. So, You're is that point the that the shadow lands on? Is the point that the shadow lands on? Does that happen to coincide <clears throat> topographically with the horizontal, so the vertical, the perpendicular to vertical at the obelisk? Does it coincide? Yes. Yes. That's okay. That's angle. the elevation angle. And if it wasn't, yeah. if there was other topography, then you would need to adjust it. Up then that requires a flat plane. Down. You just described a flat plane, and now you're ignoring describing a flat plane. The flat plane that we are talking about here is eye level or perpendicular to vertical. That is the horizontal no, we're flat not plane that we're talking about, about. Eye level. We're not talking about eye level. We're just using the ground. There right, is no the eye base, level. The base of the obelisk would still be able to. You'd still be able to have a, a plumb bob vertical. Whatever is hop, uh, perpendicular to that, that is a horizontal plane. That horizontal plane is not the surface of the Earth. Well, well, see, the thing is, that shadow falls across the ground. Right. And that is your baseline. And as I've said, does the point of that shadow happen to coincide with the horizontal plane established at the obelisk? And you've said yes. yes. And I went, great. That's a flat earth. No, <laughs> that's topography. Yeah. That, okay, so you jump back to topography again. again. Right. Because it's you're just coincidence. Those, and you're going no, it's purpose. coincidence that, it, that you've happened to say yes, that it does coincide. Of this course is it so coincides. fundamental. We, we live on a flat plane. It's all we have mountains, John. We have mountains, right? There's no guarantee that that no, point where the shadow not, lands is going to coincide. You're confusing them again. You're confusing them again. You're confusing topography and geometry again. You're doing right. it. Can you, can you present me, MC2? Yeah. Okay. Can you, am I on screen now? Uh, I've got my screen shared, so hold on. No, hang on, no, I don't. Whoops. Share screen, screen two. There you go. Is that better? Nope. All right. There we go. All right. All right. That's a theodolite on the left. Do you agree that the, the elevation angle is the angle between that horizontal, so eye level, and whatever you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah, okay. horizontal. So, what is define horizontal just so everybody is yeah. up on the thing. perpendicular, perpendicular to the, the vertical. So you hang a plumb bob and you just get perpendicular to that. That is horizontal. And that would be the same on a flat plane. Um yep. at from say the left side of that screen to the right side of the screen, right? Sorry, is horizontal the same concept on a flat plane? Yes. No, no, no. No, if you're on a flat plane and on the left side of the screen, you got the guy with the theodolite, and on the right side of the screen, it's the same throughout, right? You're asking, would that horizontal be parallel to like sea level? The, right, the, the flat plane, right. Not the topography. We're not talking right, about yeah. topography. We're talking about a fundamental aspect of reality. Yeah. Right. So yes, on a flat plane, like, that horizontal would be would be parallel to the surface for, to to mean sea level. Sorry. Right. It would, would it be, be on a sphere? Parallel to, to the 
to the parallel to the this the mean sea level? No, of course not. On a sphere, right? That that would not Correct. be parallel. Correct. Right. Okay. One's now, a, if you one's take a circle, the, one's a straight line. Right. And if you take the theodolite out of it and you're just using the ground, can you get an angle with one of your lines being curved? You mean curved, curved due to refraction or curved with the surface? If the baseline, right? Right. Say the water, you got really flat water somewhere. Right. You got miles and miles of it. Yep. And you got a shadow being cast across that water. Can you get an angle with a curved baseline? When you say curved baseline, do you mean the water or, or refraction? Well, you'll be using the water as the baseline because that's where the shadow will lie, um, right? What, what am I? What am I using? What? The shadow will be lying across the baseline, will it not? Right, but what am I using to measure the angle? Well, you could probably get a protractor at that point, right? Okay, so because I'll I'll have a protractor. Shadow. I'll have a protractor. I will hang a, a weight on a string from it, and then I'll measure the elevation directly from that without referencing the surface at all. Well, see, the thing is, the bottom of that protractor is flat. When you set it on the ground to get that angle, that's flat what? too. Uh, protractors are round. What are you talking they about? They are half round. But see, the, the oh, okay. angle itself doesn't necessarily make it round. You could have a square protractor as long as the correlating degrees work. And that's, you, you kind of get into the concept of the celestial sphere model at that point. Because yeah, you're so just taking the horizontal plane in the celestial sphere model and getting an angle to the celestial objects, right? But you're geometrically so showing them as a sphere because the tool you're using is basically a protractor. You're working in arcs. Angle. Right, but with with a right. protractor, right? I'm if we're using like a semicircle protractor, right? I'm going to stick a little telescope on that flat side, and and hang a weight from a string from the center, and then I'm going to use that little telescope to sight to a star or whatever, and based on where that plumb bob is hanging, I've measured an elevation angle. I did not reference the surface at all. Right, but so you're missing nothing from to the do. point I, I was making about the shadow cast across the ground as your right. baseline being an angle. You said it was, and now you're kind of implying it's not. We, Is that going to be an angle or not? It's going to be an angle, but because the surface of water is curved, right, that point that the shadow lands on will not be on the horizontal at whatever thing is causing the shadow. Right, so you will have to adjust it. Now, if it's 20 meters, the adjustment's basically zero, right? Virtually zero. Well, if the sun's two degrees above the horizon, okay, it's going to be a lot more than that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, what, what is the longest shadow measured for, say, 100 feet? Does it matter? I don't even know that. Yeah. If it's not, if the point that the shadow ends at is not on the horizontal, at the point of whatever is causing the shadow, then you will need to adjust it because the earth is curved. Well, see, the thing is, when you're talking about angles, are you saying that the point where the shadow ends is going to be a different angle from the point where it touches the earth? Is that your claim? Right. What, what I'm saying is that if you want an <laughs> elevation angle, what I'm saying is, if you want an elevation angle, then the point at which the shadow lands must be on the horizontal of the thing that casts the shadow to get an accurate right. elevation. Flatter. No, flatter. Just as, right. if, if it's not, then you have to adjust it. If that point is not on the horizontal, then you need to adjust it. That is it. You just described a flatter. No, I've described an adjustment you might need to make because the earth is curved. But the thing, if the earth's curved, then that shadow will never fall on the same plane because a straight line is only tangent to a sphere at one point. If the earth is curved, then yes, that shadow cast over the water will not end at the, at the horizontal point, correct? 
You would have to so adjust it we'll never, over smooth water. So you can never use the Earth as the baseline for an angle if you lived on a sphere. No, that's not correct because we're going to talk about sextants now, aren't we? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the point where you yeah really. So we, we want to talk about sextants. What you just said. Hold on, no, because the the geometric principle that you're missing. Right, the uh, I've, I've got the geometric. Not principle. the same angle at the tip of the shadow as it is at the bottom of the obelisk for the shadow right. to start. That's right. It would be an inaccurate and inaccurate elevation angle. If you want an accurate one, then you'll need to correct it. So Eratosthenes corrected for that. I don't think so because his shadow would have been two meters away, probably less. So he just used the Earth as a flat plane at that point, right? Two meters of it, sure. <laughs> would, you, would you like to? Would you like to take into account the the uh, I don't know fiftieth uh, of a millimeter of Earth curvature in that? Is it okay that he measured seven degrees and not seven point zero 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 one degrees? Is that okay? You still there? He's, he's muted himself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm yes. sorry. I, I hit the button twice by accident. Oh. My bad. Yeah. yeah. But what I was saying, though, is the methodology he used to get the height of the mountain before he measured the dip angle. Do you accept that? That he used an approximation. Yes, I do agree with that. Yep. Yeah. He used the flat plane. Yes, to approximate the height of the mountain. I agree. Do you think he, he accepts the Earth is flat, or do you think he was just making an approximation? What do you think? I think he was using the necessity of reality to get I the height he, of the mountain. Yeah. I think he didn't know the radius of the Earth, and he knew how much of a, an error would be introduced by assuming a flat plane to get the height of the mountain. That's what I think. Did Do he, you know did how much that in error? The story? How is that in the story that he I, I don't that know. his his calculation of the mountain was an error? It would have because been people an error. use shadows known it. all the people use shadows all the time to measure the heights of things with triangles. Yes. Yep. Right. Yep. Triangle. The length of the shadow is one baseline. Right over the earth. But given he object. was trying to measure the radius of the Earth, do you think he just accepted that there would be some margin of error in that calculation? Or do you think he believes that the Earth is flat when he's trying to measure the radius? What do you think? I think it's the same thing as when you use the flat plane to describe how you would navigate on a globe. I, I don't use a flat plane to navigate on a globe. I don't use a flat That's Earth to navigate on a globe. Yeah, you, the celestial sphere model utilizes a flat plane that's a flat Earth. Are you, are you saying that the celestial sphere right. uses a flat Earth, so a flat surface, to navigate on a globe? What, what on Earth do you mean by no, that? No, I'm, saying, with, like, I'm, saying, I'm saying the idea of a globe is a projection from the flat Earth that you dwell on to the celestial sphere model. It's just a model. I'm, and I'm as it gets convinced. closer to the horizon, it doesn't correspond with reality. That's why they add this idea of refraction to it. Because I'm it convinced doesn't you don't know what the, the celestial sphere model is. If I said right ascension and declination, would you be able to tell me what those mean? Ascension and declination. Uh, ascension would be up and down, declination is left to right, right? Well, actually the opposite. If I gave you so oh, right ascension, sorry. what's what's the analog to right ascension? Analog to right ascension, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that would be. Left declination, I don't know. No, no. the analog to know. right ascension is longitude, and the analog to declination is latitude. Okay, right, so what's the celestial sphere, and then you project right. those points that correlate on the ground, the flat plane, up to the celestial sphere, and that's your globe. How do you not so see you that? To... <laughs> I'll figure out what you're talking about in a minute, but you understand that the celestial sphere, like all the stars are basically projected onto the, the inside of the, 
of the sphere, right? And it covers the entire sphere. No, no that is, that is what the celestial that... sphere is. That is what the celestial sphere is. It's right ascension and declination, right? So you have stars all inside this sphere. All the surface is covered with stars. And you're saying you chop it in half? Is that what I'm getting? No, the celestial sphere is angle measurements placed in a geometric model so that we can use it for navigation. The correlation between the arc angle measurements of those angles from a flat plane correspond to the celestial sphere. But as it gets closer to the horizon, those measurements don't match up as well. So they're adjusted. When you say because horizon, you like atmosphere. If it was atmospheric refraction, right, then it would constantly be a shifting thing. But you have a set value at certain heights that you adjust for, do you not? When you say horizon in the celestial sphere model, you understand that there are stars all around the surface. All right? When you say horizon, it sounds like you're talking about a, an observer, and that's, that's a different, uh, a different well, sphere. See, that's the thing. In the celestial sphere model, you have the point where the angle is taken from, which is the ground in the celestial sphere model. And then no, you no, have the, the horizon. So the right ascension three, and declination is taken from the center. Are, no, you don't measure from the center of Earth. Are You in, You measure from the surface. The, the coordinates, right ascension and declination, are at the center. Yeah, where you stand. <laughs> it's not the center of Earth. Like, no, now, now you're talking about altitude and azimuth. So that's, that's a transformation of right ascension and declination. So you're talking about your sort of observer's celestial sphere. Okay, so there's an observer's celestial sphere now. Okay, which has a horizon. Take yeah. a celestial sphere and then put it on a sphere and then put it inside a celestial sphere with an equatorial plane? Is that yeah, it's where, you trans, it's where you translate the right ascension and declination into altitude and azimuth. And guess what? You have to use spherical geometry to do it. Right, because yes. you're using <laughs> arc angle measurements, right? Oh, man. It's because it's a celestial sphere model, but it's still a flat earth that bisects it. Again, when you say bisect it, do you mean like you chop it in half? Like do you, do you slice it off at the celestial equator? Is that what you're saying? No, that's just the point where the stars disappear into the horizon. You don't ever observe the celestial sphere. That's a... That's an imaginary. Right. It is. It is. What, all you yeah. see is this half of the celestial sphere, and it's like a dome. So for the right. flat earthers that believe in a dome, whatever, you know. Okay. But so you, you're seeing half of the celestial sphere now, right? So you can see half the, the stars. And if I'm antipodal to you on a globe, I would see the other half. Right. But you would have to assert okay. that that plane that you're standing on, right, the plane that you're taking the measurements from is of 180 degrees antipodal to me that you don't sure that's yeah. not how but planes even work. now i'm that's in australia now i'm in australia so when you are an observer and you slice your celestial sphere off to give you your like personal celestial sphere your plane that you've just sliced off must be parallel with my plane correct if we're on a flat earth the plane that you slice off with your horizon must be on the same plane as mine Yet we see different stars. Therefore, no, no. we have sliced off different parts. You don't see forever, though. The point, the horizon is the disillusionment point that's caused from several factors. It's not a geometric curve that blocks things with its physicality. That's not what the horizon is. I thought that argument died with the black swan, but this, this has brought up that geomet geometric horizon thing that, I don't even we, get we why y'all are bringing it back up. We were going to we're going to talk about the sextant, right? Measuring to the horizon, right? Should we do that. The flat plane you're standing on, the flat plane that your eye creates when it's ninety degrees vertical. To, <laughs> the parallel between those two, you measure the differential. But so the when point you say at which you can plane, no longer see the horizon is a disillusionment point. When you say flat plane, are you referring to the surface or horizontal, like eye level? Both. Both. So you're just assuming that the Earth's flat plane. 
Well, it has to be for you to measure angles from it. Why? Because the base. I've just shown you what, what I'm sharing on screen now makes no reference to the surface whatsoever. Please explain how a theodolite references the shape of the surface to measure an elevation. The horizon, but the I'm not looking at the horizon. This, We're, right, we'll talk the about the sextant in a minute. Does, the sextant references the horizon, does it not? We That's will get to the sextant. I promise we will get to the sextant up. in a minute. I promise we'll get to the sextant in a minute. Up. I promise we'll get to the sextant in a minute. So what I'm sharing on screen, this does not reference the surface at all, yet it measures an elevation angle, correct? It has a flat baseline over another flat baseline. And that um, flat baseline is eye level, which again is not the surface, correct? But the bottom of your screen is also flat too. So I, the, same. the terrain is all over the place. Point, my right? point is this. The blue line is vertical. Can I establish a, horiz a horizontal that is perpendicular to that? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. The bottom. Do of I your need the surface? The red dotted line. They're both. Flying. Do I need the surface to be a particular shape to establish that horizontal? What you do need is a parallel. It to be parallel to the surface. I don't need that. It's clearly, obviously, not parallel to the surface in that diagram. So I do not need did not get an angle measurement from the ground. I do not need the surface to be flat to establish that horizontal. That so horizontal is perpendicular to vertical. That is all it is. I do not need so the surface Austin to be flat for that horizontal to be perpendicular. Right. Can I so measure Austin an elevation angle not... with a theodolite? So Eratosthenes could not have but measured the question, an angle to the sun. The question is, does a theodolite measure an elevation angle without referencing the surface? Which is a non sequitur because oh, we both agree that on a flat earth, it would not need to either. So what's your point? I have established a vertical with a plumb bob or whatever. I establish 90 degrees to it to establish a horizontal. I have not referenced the surface in any way. So if you did reference the surface, like if you say you set it on the ground, that line that comes, the red line that comes out could never be parallel to the surface. It won't be parallel to the surface. The surface is very bumpy. Uh, over water. Okay, it will be curving away then. Right, which contradicts okay. the celestial sphere model. Of I have not referenced the surface at all in this diagram. Do you understand? Yes, and I'm pointing out that okay. your assertion that the ground's falling away is contradicting the celestial sphere model that's using but a black just, plane to measure angles to the celestial stars. We're just measuring an elevation angle, nothing to do with the celestial sphere model, okay? So right, before but we your can move whole on, premise, hold on, because the whole premise of you doing all those uh, calculations and you were supposed to be using your model. If you're using the celestial sphere, that's a flat plane model. So you're proving my point here. Oh, you, you're allowed to be incorrect, John. That's okay, but I just want to get this clear. Why am I incorrect? Why we're, we're am I get incorrect? There. Yeah, because I'm telling you that I've not referenced the surface to get this elevation angle. Do you agree that I have not referenced the surface? If you're not going to talk about the surface, then what's the point? I thought we were but talking We're just about getting an elevation here. angle. That's all we're doing. All right, step one, the step that you failed. You didn't even get to step one. Step I have one not referenced the plane. surface what are you talking about? Well, you keep asserting that, and I'm <laughs> asking you with reference to this diagram, how did I reference the surface? I didn't. I've established a vertical and I've stuck a freaking right set square against it. And that's my horizontal. Nothing to do with the surface. So he didn't hand I, the theodolite. Hold on. He didn't hand you no theodolite. He said he handed you a sextant. So fine. we're talking about okay. sextants well, in a no, minute. No, no, not fine. No, no, because you said you did not reference the ground. We'll get to sextants in a minute. We'll get to say, does, I promise we'll get to does a sextant. Does a sextant reference the ground? Yes, and I promise I will get to the sextant That's in a, a minute. That's a problem. We'll get there in a minute, John. I'm just trying to establish that I have measured an elevation angle 
with the theodolite without referencing the surface whatsoever. Do you agree that I've done that? Well, of course. You have a flat okay. plane over a flat plane. Good job. <laughs> again, again, <laughs> you almost got there and then threw that last bit in. All right. Did I? So it can't be, it can't be a flat plane over a flat plane. That I'm not referencing the right? surface at all. Do you understand I'm not referencing the surface? It doesn't matter what shape the surface is. I can establish right. a vertical and I can establish a horizontal. The elevation right, angle is relative to that horizontal. Can I measure an elevation angle with a theodolite regardless of the shape of the earth? Yes or no, please. I done said yes. Yeah. What are, you, what are you going on about? Move on. Do you accept that I can measure that elevation angle with a theodolite without referencing the surface or the shape of the surface? Do you do that with a sextant? I'm asking you for a theodolite. Right. We use the sextant for the Understood. challenge. Though, didn't and we? I've said now six times, I promise you we will get to sextants. Please answer the question. Mm -hmm. So and you did very, not very reference not to the answer surface that. of Earth. You did not reference the surface of Earth. For this, no. Do you agree that I did not reference the surface of the Earth to measure that angle with a theodolite? No. Why? <laughs> the parallel. The parallel. It's parallel to the surface. If it's that's your that's your assertion, all right? That's your assertion. But I'm literally, literally I demonstrated just hanging... it with. I demonstrated it with the shadows not two minutes ago, and you're ignoring it now. I'm hanging a plumb bob. Okay, and I stick a set square against it and I look along the edge of the set square. Did I require the earth to be a particular shape for me to do that? Do you think flat is the shape? Oh, Jesus, John, this is, it's really- We're talking about an aspect of the ground, right? No, we're not is talking about the ground. Is it curving or is it not? We're is not talking about the not? ground to establish this, all right? This, so this is establishing an elevation angle without refer reference to the ground. That's fine. You can okay, so yes, yes. A flat plane can be parallel to a flat plane. It yeah. can be, right? But it doesn't matter for the purposes of this. Nope. You're not referencing the ground. I already told you. Excellent. So I can measure an elevation angle without referencing the ground, right? Yes. As long as you we have agreement? a plane, as long as you have a plane that is parallel to the ground, yeah, you can. Oh. Jesus, John. I don't know where to go from this. It's very simple. I hang a plumb bob. I hang a plumb bob. Do I, do I require... Not You're not getting it. Do I require a flat earth to hang a plumb bob? Yes or no? Do you want it to be 90 degrees to the surface? Just Literally just a yes or no. I'm hanging a plumb bob. Does the earth okay. have to be flat to do that? Is that 90 degrees to the surface? It's just gravity down, right? I'm just hanging a plumb bob. Does the earth have to be so flat for me to do that? Gravity, you're assuming that it's got a radius. Whatever, four, acceleration four, down, four, four, whatever four, whatever the down four, direction four. is. So yes. Down. Yep. Okay. I hang a plumb bob. I can do that without the earth being flat, yes? In free space, you hang a plumb bob. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I'm just trying to, you're jumping between geometric considerations and topology earlier. I was just wondering if you're trying to do that now. Are you talking about establishing a 90 to a vertical? Horizontal, yeah, perpendicular to vertical, yes. Can you do that at the ground? I, I just want to hang a plumb bob. Can I do that without requiring a flat earth? It's a very simple question. It's not a trick. Can you hang a vertical in free space? On earth. Uh, oh, okay. so we are referencing the ground then. You said Earth. We're not referencing the ground, regardless of the shape of the Earth. Did not can say I Earth. hang up? I'm plumber? sorry. You did not say Earth. You're talking about free space, but not free space on Earth. But we're on Earth. Not we're on Earth. We, we don't know its you shape. See the problem right? I'm having with you right now? Uh, I think you're deliberately making problems. This is a very simple no, question. Okay. Wait, wait. Can I hang a plumb bob while standing on Earth? Does that require a flat Earth to hang a plumb bob? No. Excellent. Okay. Now, can I get a set square and hold it up against the plumb bob? Does that require <clears throat> the earth to be flat? 
Where are you putting the square? Are you going to put it on the ground? Up against the plumb bob. <laughs> Come on, John. Up against the plumb bob. Yep. So anywhere that you reference will be parallel to the ground. Because can I hold a set square against the plumb bob? Yes or no? Does it require yes. a flat earth to do it? So I yes. can do it, and, and all it doesn't those, require all a flat those earth. All those planes you will create will be parallel to the ground. Well, that's your assertion in your model, because right? But you've just said it doesn't require a flat earth to do that. Well, hold okay. on. Do you want to go back to free space? No, we're on earth. Is that we're what on earth. We've hung a plumb bob. Oh, we are you've on finally, earth. Finally, yeah, we're Nothing on earth. finally agreed. You finally agreed that Nothing hanging a plumb bob is not proof of flat earth. Well done. Now, well, is putting said, a set square. Will it be 90? Will this plumb bob be 90 to the ground with 90 degrees to the ground? If I hang a plumb bob no. on a slope, what does it do? I'm so on the side of a hill. Okay. No, it doesn't if you hang it over the ocean, if you hang it over the ocean, will it be 90 degrees to the surface of the water? Yes, at that point. Wow. That would be a flat earth. No, at that point, at the horizontal at that point, it will make a right angle with it. At that, that point. That is a flat earth. You just described no, it. No, it's earth. not. Do you not understand it what is. horizontal is? The earth. Would be your baseline. The no, it's not. Would meet the Earth. Oh, okay. Well, if if your baseline horizontal, is not the Earth, eye level is your base level. Eye levels. Okay, so you're That's not horizontal. talking about you're not talking about the square anymore. You're going back to eye level. But we're gonna we're gonna look along not it on Earth, second. but on Earth. But we ain't talking about the ground. Anyway, right. we're on Earth. We've hung a plumb bob, and you agreed that's not proof of flat Earth. All right. Next step is to so hold hung a, a set plumb square bob on Earth. Yeah, on Earth. You hung a yep. plumb bob on Earth, but yep. we're not referencing the ground. Correct. So next step, step two, is holding a set square, holding a set square up against the plumb bob. Does that? But you can't require, do that. You can't do that at the ground, right? I'm holding it up against the plumb bob. Right, but you can't do that at the ground because the ground's curving away, right? Oh, the ground could be any shape. Topology, right? Topography, right? We're holding okay. the set square. On the water. This this has taken five minutes, John. This has taken five minutes. I know, because you keep yeah. jumping back and forth. Like you're wanting to jump back. Right, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going in circles. So, yeah. John, don't play semantics games. Just, just agree because this won't help you. It's just making you look very desperate. Just agree that you can hang a plumb bob. A plumb bob. Desperate. Okay. Are That's you it. About... Just agree you can hang a plumb bob and you can agree. you can put it a protractor next to it, okay? So you can put a 90 this... degrees on Earth, but not reference Earth. Yeah, Correct. this is making complete sense. Rock yeah, absolutely. On. There's nothing wrong with that, John. That's just making you look <laughs> yeah, incredibly the, desperate. So the let's water, move forward. Let's the water move forward. is not 90 nobody, degrees. Nobody the is, water is, is not giving you points. Nobody's giving you points for this one, John. Just move, <laughs> move ahead. They're giving okay? me points. This is insanity. It's just it's insanity. insanity to hang yes, a plumb bob. Move ahead. Yeah. A plumb bob is vertical. No, it's That's insanity. It. You can measure 90 degrees to a plumb bob. do with Earth if you're hanging a plumb bob on Earth. There's right? nothing related to that's the shape insanity. of the ground with that. All right, move on. Okay. So I've hung a plumb bob. <laughs> and we agree that's not proof of flat earth. We're holding a set square against the plumb bob. Okay. Is, is that proof of flat earth? Yes or no? The water is not no, going John, to be matching up to the bottom of that. I, I don't care what your, level, your right? assertion is. I don't care what your assertion is, right? No, it's not my assertion. He I don't think the ground's pretty about curving. Water. John, he didn't say anything about water. I just, I just remind you of that. So your water is not the surface. He of didn't anything, say anything right? about the water. Just listen to the words he said. Water isn't the surface. Yeah. The that surface is, of the water. The, the fact that you can't answer these non-trick questions very quickly and easily says everything about flat earth, John. This is honestly. elementary school questions. stuff. John. They are elementary basic. School. They are basic geometry, and you guys are just like whistling I, I agree it's basic it like geometry. You don't get it. And I then you're acting like I'm country. stupid for pointing out where you're failing. And you're acting like I'm the idiot. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like this, is, crazy this is field. simple stuff. You hang a plumb bob, you put a put a protractor next to it, you get 90 degrees. Nothing has to do with the shape of the earth. Let's move on. Okay. So I can <laughs> can I hold this set square against the plumb bob? Yes or no? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. If I look along that edge. I have just measured zero degrees elevation without referencing the surface. Do you agree? Yeah. 
Yes. So I've measured an elevation angle without refer referring to the surface, correct? In, in free space or on Earth? On the Earth. On the Earth. On Earth. Yes. You've got your zero baseline. Good job. Yes. So I've measured zero degrees elevation angle and I've not referenced the surface, correct? No, nope, you've used a vertical. Yeah, I used a vertical. That's not the surface of the earth. We agree that that would work the same on flat earth and globe. So I've measured an elevation nope, angle no, we didn't. of zero. Nope, yes, nope. we did. No, 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 yes, no. We did. no. You, do, you do not have a 90 on the surface of a globe. We agreed. You only have a point of bisection at which you can create a 90 from by introducing a horizontal. We agreed that you don't down have that on would a work on a flat no, don't, try to, don't try to pretend like I agreed to that. You don't agree that you're saying that the fact of hanging a plumb bob is proof of flat earth? Are you serious? No, the point. No, the point so I which, can do it on a globe. The point at which the water bisects that plumb bob and, and doesn't curve away water. and creates a 90 degree angle is proof of flat earth. So can, well, let's go back to step one. Can I hang a plumb bob? Is that proof of flat earth? You said no. So I can hang a plumb bob and it's not proof of flat earth. Right. Right. So why then did you say that as soon as I put a right angle to it, which again doesn't reference the surface, somehow means the earth's flat? It's insane. Because as soon as you put that right angle to the surface, you put to the flat plumb bob, earth. to the plumb bob. You put the right angle to the plumb bob and touch that to the surface. That's nothing to do with the surface. Nothing to do with the surface. So you'll never touch it to the surface. I'm touching it to the plumb bob. All right. And if I look along that right angle, that is zero degrees elevation. I have not referenced the surface at all to measure an elevation angle. Do you agree? I, I done said yes. Yes, excellent. There's your housekeeping question, John. Can I acquire an elevation yeah. angle? Yes, thank you. Take Hold that on to Nathan, please. No, you got a zero line, right? Right. Okay, let's put a protractor on it and look at something in the sky. Okay. But you're going to, to get an elevation angle, you have to do that from the surface. No, okay. I don't. Elevation angles do not use the surface as a reference, they use horizontal. We just went through this. You Show agree me that in that the was zero. Experiment you experiment just model, agree. They adjust for elevation. You just agree that was Show zero degrees in the elevation. Celestial in the celestial sphere model, they don't adjust for elevation. You just agreed that was zero degrees elevation. It did not reference the surface. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Zero degrees elevation. Sure. Okay. Stick a protractor on it and, and point to something in the sky. Measure the difference between that zero degrees elevation and whatever it is you're pointing at. There's your elevation uh -huh. angle with no reference to the surface. And the point at which you touch the ground. We're, we're not touching that the elevation ground. angle from 90. Hold on. You're not, it's not touching the ground, but we're just going to lower our arm a little bit and we're going to act like we're not children about it and say the point at which it touches the earth. Is the earth creating a 90 with that plumb no. bomb? We've got topography. No, it's not. When you look at the horizon, are you creating a 90 with that plumb bomb? When I so what? When I when hang you a plumb look bob. at the horizon and you see that line cut through that plumb bob, are you creating a 90? With what? Plumb bob is just vertical. Where's the, where does the 90 degrees come into it? The horizontal that cuts through it. So like the calling a set square? The, the, the horizon. visible horizon. The visible horizon is not at 90 degrees, no. No, it will create a 90 with that plumb bob from your perspective. No, no the horizon is not think... perpendicular. The horizon is measurably <laughs> not perpendicular to vertical. Why do you think we do dip correction? Hold on. No, you're, you're thinking of it from your position to the horizon. What I'm talking about, if you're holding that plumb bob directly out in front of you, right, right. and drop it down to the ground, and you look past the plumb bob to the horizon, the point at which the plumb bob is the horizon. Hang on, you're it's right right. That's, the, that's the most ancient way to create a 90. 
you can do it since time and memorial, they still do it. And just, you're saying just to be that clear. that is not real? Just to be clear, you're asserting that the, the visible horizon is at zero degrees elevation? No, 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 no. You're, you're you robot that. what I just said. No, you, you robot it a fair bit, so. No, we're not talking about the elevation angle. We're just talking about when you drop that plumb bob and you look at it at any point and you want to take your square and put it anywhere, mm -hmm. right? That square, if you raised it up to the point of the horizon, would you create a 90 with the horizon and that plumb bob? Like I said, the horizon is not at... 90 degrees to a plumb bob. No, you're, ta you're taking it in orthographic. I'm talking about from your position where you hold a string that's got a plumb mm -hmm. bob in front of you, yeah. in front of the horizon, does the horizon create a 90 degree angle with the plumb bob? No. The, like I said, the horizon is not no, at, from at eye level. your perspective, right? You're wanting yes. to put this in orthographic view and look from, at it from, from my like perspective. On the left side and the horizon's on the right side, but that's not how you see things. Right. If you hold from that my string perspective, in front of the you, horizon, the horizon, if I had a theodolite from my perspective, the horizon will be below eye level. That is why we do dip correction. That's fine. That's yes. fine. So what but, are you talking about? Yeah, you're talking about adjusting one plane to another because of your height above the ground. No, it's your assertion That's that there are two planes. Thing. One is a plane with others a curve. No, the other one can't be curved. Or when you put that uh, plumb bob on the ground, you wouldn't have a 90 because it would we be have, curved. You wouldn't have, have terrain. You wouldn't have right. an angle. You wouldn't yes. have an angle oh, because we've, we've you're asserting the space lines curved at that point. We've been through this many times. Uh, I have, I have right here. It? I've drawn, I've basic. drawn a picture. I've drawn a picture here just okay. for uh, for references here. There, there right, is, there's what you've what you've uh, uh, described, Ruhif. Uh, uh, he's talking about the horizon there, right? Okay. You've got a plumb bob there. Yeah, but, yep. this is just you've got the plumb bob. And then you've got a 90 degree to that plumb bob. Yep. Right. And then mm -hmm. and then say that that mountain there, right? You could you could uh measure to the top of that mountain. You have no idea what I just said, do you? I don't. No, <laughs> what, what I think you're saying is sense. that the horizon's at eye level yeah. and it's not. No, it's God no. You're 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 trying right. to put it in so an here, orthographic here view. You're not there, getting it. There's there you could you could measure the angle to that mountain there. See that? that that's that's not hard to do. Wow. This is elementary school. Wow, that's, uh, that's like here. a There's revelation. Nothing, nothing yeah. challenging about this. That's basic. So what that is, is maybe you can basic. draw it. What? Maybe draw your point. Yeah. Go ahead, John. You don't need to draw. You, they do this. Oh, hold on a sec. Yeah, let me try. I got to find something to write on. Go ahead. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The Holy Roman Empire was neither Holy Roman nor an empire. Discuss. Um, so, all right. Well, it's Ruh, if you are, you're getting close to the end of what you can be yeah, here anyway. I, I am technically over time. The cleaners are here. All right. So, I, I can go for a little while until I start to get annoying. Well, I have, we didn't I have quite, uh, 20, 22 minutes. I have another one. So, um, okay. We haven't really discussed much of celestial navigation. No, didn't really no, it's get just very been hard, elementary we? school geometry. So. Yeah. so, oh dear. All right. All right. So we're we're seeing. All right. There you go. Is that a the plumb bob on the left there? Oh, there it is. Okay. okay. Plumb bob. Yep. Okay. And what are we what are we doing? Oh, John, I think you muted yourself. Yeah, he's muted. Yeah. But uh, this is hard on a phone. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah. But like you're holding the plumb bob up in front of you. Okay. Right? This is just from your eye, from you looking out over the earth. You hold that plumb bob up like that, right? Yep. Is that a 90? Oh, does it That's does the horizon, it form? The, the horizontal line behind it, right? Well, the, the problem is that the horizon is curved. 
So it's, it's not going to be a straight line that intersects the plumb bob. So it is curved, but yes, it will meet the, um, it will meet the plumb bob at a right angle, yes. But that line is actually a curve. So you're, see, that's the problem with all this. Y'all are asserting that you can have angles with curved baselines, and that's just not geometrically possible. I, again, what I'm sharing on screen it makes no reference to the surface. I just held up a plumb bob and didn't touch yeah. the surface, but when I looked through it and seen the surface, it had to be a flat plane. No, why is that a be flat plane? That's a curve anyway, in, in reality. Egg, no, it can't be a curve or it wouldn't be an angle. You already agreed it was oh, a 90, okay. and then you're wanting to go against that. No, it is a curve, but it will meet. They will cross at 90 degrees. No. You're aware that you can not, get angles with not, curves anyway, right? That is not the definition of an angle. You can oh, get okay. an angle to a curved surface with two straight lines. You need L two me, straight me lines meeting at a vertex. Hold on. This is the definition of angle. Like, uh, basic elementary. It is two straight lines meeting at a vertex. That is what creates an angle. You can are have you a claiming, straight line. Let's, curve line John, are you vertex, claiming that, that this angle, an angle could not be measured? I just want to be clear. Are you claiming this angle could not be measured? Are you are you saying I, no, just that yes that no. is an angle? Uh, are you saying that's an angle? Can, can, is it possible to measure an angle at this intersection? Is that possible? To what points? The intersection point. This is, this it is not a trick question, John. Yeah. This is a simple question that's covered in in eighth that's grade what... geometry. Is this <laughs> is this angle here something that can be measured? If you use straight lines to measure each point from the point of intersection. It's just a yes or no. Can you yes. measure the angle between can, the if, if on we put, So if we put but tangents. Angle inherently itself. John, no. John, just, just a simple just yes or no. That. Is it possible to measure the angle between A these simple two yes lines, or no to a malformed question. That is not an angle. No. Okay. Let, let me share my screen. Right, well, let me well, share John, my screen. Hold on. John, you, this, you failed that eighth is grade geometry. But uh, go ahead, Ruben. No, no, I didn't. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Actually, did I hear that you're a uh, qualified engineer? Is that correct? Who? I'm an EPRI certified instrumentation technician. Yes. Uh, does that require a engineering degree at all? I have dual bachelor's in mechanical and electrical engineering. Okay. So with that, I assume that you've done calculus. Is that true? Yes. And okay. I'm telling so, you, you what's see what's those grid first thing you do in calculus? Grid squares curved, sir. Wow. Are those grid squares curved? What's the, the grid squares thing curved? you do in calculus? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Fake engineer calling it. Those grid squares you don't have are degree. not. You did not curved. get calculus. You, not possible. How can you not get. Oh my not God. Not possible. You can you, can you share, share my screen? The grid yeah, squares yeah, are it. not curved. Are you not getting that? So like, you, you're talking what is the about plotting a line, a curved line. On, I mean, John, you gave yourself away. Oh you gave yourself yeah. away, John. If you if you think you, you can't measure me. an angle to a curve, then you gave yourself away. You never took any. You can. You're mixing it. You cannot <laughs> measure an angle from a curve. Are you insane? So, hang on. Share my screen. You're, share my screen. you're, yeah, mixing, you're mixing two and from you, now. People are, people Look at the definition of angle. Are you insane? Okay. Two and from. So, you're confusing. Can, can you see my words. screen, John? Can you see my uh, no, screen? No, I can't do this. I cannot do this anymore. You all you have done you calculus. Have you have done, he's done he's calculus. He's not, Ruhif, that he's not done calculus. There's no chance. To a curve he, he doesn't have an angle from he does not have a curve curve are the same thing. And you know better. Oh, That's man. childish and inappropriate. I'm not going to do this with you anymore. Are you exposing yourself, If you're John, asserting you can you get an angle take from a curve line, yeah. you are a liar. You can't. It you can't do be a straight line. John. Now it can be a straight line to a curved surface, but you should know better, and you're lying to people. I think you're lying about having an engineering degree. Yeah, you don't have a degree. <laughs> you would. You must have done calculus. You must have. If, if a bachelor's degree in engineering requires calculus, you did not take yeah. calculus, John. Right. So on screen, can I get an angle between these two curves? He he left. He left. Rage oh, quit. Oh, Rage quit. Well, all right. Let's let's review this here. I'm gonna. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you you. Yes, yeah, so that's you, yeah. you definitely can measure an angle to a, a differentiate, curve. and I I calculate an angle of seventy point five three, and guess what? 
Whoops. Guess what? Guess what happens when I put the, the protractor on? Oh my gosh. Oh my God, it's 70.53. My goodness. There it is. Well, uh, anyway. John there, he definitely exposed uh, that he does not have a an engineering degree. Um, there's no way. You, you have to take it in order to be a, a engineer. You take a calculus. You take a full year of calculus, and then you take a year of engineering math or something similar. So, um, yeah, that's... Anyway, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ruhif. That was fantastic. We have a few super chats. Uh, I'm going to have to go through with it. It might push back the, um, the start of the next one. So uh, Professor Phil Bell and uh, Shane St. Uh, St. Pierre will be. Uh, I'll have to move that, move that back a little bit. But uh, John, thank you very much for completely you, destroying Flat Earth. Um, flat Earth cannot do celestial navigation. I have a ten thousand dollar challenge, and I see ten, uh, tenth man is in here. Tenth man, do celestial oh, navigation. Man. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Show how celestial navigation works. And John just spent the whole time basically showing that he does not know elementary school. Um, yeah. And dodging geometry. very basic questions. Yes. Very very basic questions. How, how long did it take for him to just agree that you could hang up? A plumb bob and measure 90 20 degrees. minutes <laughs> yeah, it's not a trick question yeah you don't you don't get points for that all right well if you needed to go um i probably should actually all yeah. right well thank you very I'll much i'll hang around read, read the super chats and i'll hang around yeah. all right all right I'll, uh, <laughs> there's uh, i don't even i haven't even seen uh I suppose there's a, a a good number of them so all right. It's too bad I was hoping John would stick around to um, to yeah. get some questions, but he might have rage quit. He's, he's going to have to bring his uh, degrees next time. <laughs> there's no, there's no chance he took calculus. No, not a chance. Not, like, not the, literally, the first thing you do when you do calculus is you get like y equals x squared and differentiate it from first principles. Yeah. So the, the fact that he said you can't get angles to curves, wow. It's your epsilon and delta neighborhood stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, Alyssum says for two dollars, make your bets. Will the flurf bring anything? Of course he didn't. Of course, and and it's no surprise that he didn't. Um, and he made a liar of himself too because he agreed that he would show, by way of demonstration, how celestial navigation worked, and he did not do yeah. that. He didn't even attempt. Well, that's what Hip Hop Hippie did. Uh, six, about six months ago. So, all right, Dora Unku says that the zip password is Titty Kaka. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> all right, I mean, I don't. That's how incredibly juvenile. Uh, Heat Shield says for $2, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Is he, is he here? He did. He's maybe out in the other room. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was happy that Beetlejuice was one of the stars. Yeah. Uh, Cretan Ball says a flat earther issues a challenge and has absolute issues a challenge. Yes, he issued that challenge and has absolutely nothing. Color me shocked. Can I can I just remind everyone that he, he eventually, eventually answered yes to me getting an elevation angle without reference to the surface. It took 20 minutes, half an hour, but we got there. It wasn't we didn't even get to talk question. about dip correction. Yes, yeah, we didn't get to dip correction or 69 miles per degree or circles of equal altitude. So 10th man, if you want to have a crack, um, you know, hit me up on uh, Discord or wherever. 10th man has all those books, right? He does. He bought four copies of the American Practical Navigator. So I, I, I wondered, as 10th man, do you have this one? This is the one that I went through. Uh, it would be maybe tenth man could actually work a, an example. Be maybe, um, of course he won't because you need uh, the you need the the site reduction tables and you're going to need R for that. Uh, three Ron says, and now the flurf's afraid to give a presentation. Yep. Next time we should have him go first. Flurf goes first. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa says, Flurf agrees Earth has a radius. 
does. I mean, he he's he agreed that yours was right. Yeah. And you can't do it without the radius. Yeah, you can't. You can't get sixty nautical miles per degree without radius. You can't do site reduction tables without a radius. You can't draw certain lines of uh, equal altitude without a radius. So, Pat in the chat says for five dollars, here's some money to get a surveyor fund for the families affected by the flurf killing everyone on that ship. A survivor fund. <laughs> Nothing matters except for getting the right location, and he did not do that. Their ship went down. Dana Olmo says for five dollars, hashtag how to light a flurf. That is a common hashtag. He did lie. John, just to be clear, you lied. You said you were going to show an example of celestial navigation. You did not. It's true. He agreed to the liar. terms of the debate. You are a liar, John. Uh, and and those uh, the agreement where he agreed to that is on the website, mctune.net slash cellnav, C-E-L-N-A-V. So the uh, this video plus that those screenshots is confirmation that he lied. Um, Czar says for five Canadian, can we please next time make the flurf go first so they can't pull this crap? Yeah, or hey, flurfs ten thousand dollars to show how it can be done using flat earth. I even gave them, I don't know if you saw this, Ruth. If I gave them that they can use the positions in the nautical almanac, yeah, right, they don't even need to do their own, they can use the celestial sphere, which is a concentric sphere around the globe. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for them to use that as well because yeah. it, it could just be that they've watched the stars for so long that they know the pattern. So that's, you know, that's possible. Could be. Uh, Theo Megawordy, MC2, can you post the angle to a curve proof? The angle to a curve proof is Euclid's Book 3, Proposition 18. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's, you get a tangent line, which is a, Thing that happens in geometry and uh so for this one here and it's like i said it's in calculus right here the two tangent lines yes that is how you get angles between curves there it is and then you measure you get theta right there so there's the Visual proof, if you want a more rigorous proof, it's um, Euclid, book three, prop 18. Yep. And that's basically what the refraction adjustment does for both the star and the, the uh, horizon. Yep. Is it you, you project out the line of sight at the angle at which it comes into your lens, basically. So, so it is a straight line. Like I, yep. if he had said, you know, do you agree that angles require straight lines? I'd go, maybe, but I mean, you know, you can get angles between curves. So it's not really a relevant question. Yeah. True. All right. Uh, Scott Stratford says, deflect, deflect, deflect. He's not being honest. Yeah, that was that was pathetic. We got nowhere. Like that was half an hour trying to establish that we can get an elevation angle. And we didn't, didn't talk about dip correction, didn't talk about the sextant getting that dip correction. Uh, 69 miles per degree. Um, and circles of equal altitude. So again, tenth man, if you are still listening, please, please hit up hit up one of us to uh, have a debate where we can actually talk about the issues. I think tenth man would be better. I think tenth man probably has a little better grip on geometry than John, who obviously has no grip on geometry yeah. at all, and brought nothing. Literally brought nothing. <laughs> His plan was to do nothing. His plan was to yeah. instantly lose. Yep. He would. Uh, Alyssum says, thanks to all the flat earthers that agree the earth has a radius. Going to need R for that to get the uh, site reduction tables. Indy Tiger's sci-fi review says, I navigated ships in the Navy before GPS. The celestial flip sphere is not a flat plane model, which surprises no one but the flurfs. I don't even know what he, he's talking about of this flat plane celestial sphere. From, from what I've gathered... They, they slice the earth into hemispheres and imagine you as an observer sitting at the middle looking at the celestial sphere and that immediately dis dismisses half the stars on the on the celestial sphere so yeah that can't be right 
And then he went, went waffling about, oh, they drift off into the horizon or something. And yeah, I don't know, that was weird. But <laughs> he didn't know what right ascension and declination was. No. Like how, how can you dismiss the celestial? How can you say something contradicts the celestial sphere model if you do not know what it is? That's bizarre. But again, typical flow. Yes, you never, you never know. They're like, we know more about the globe than you, but they never do. Yeah. They, they can, all they can do is repeat their mantras that they heard about how yeah. fast things move and then throw out their incredulity. Uh, so Steve6464 says for $10, thank you for that. John, do you know the difference between a cartoon and an illustration? What MC Toon showed is an illustration. Just for S and G's, can we see your work? And yes, you saw his work here. I'll, I have I have John's work right here. Hold on. There it is. Um, Breton Ball says, uh, I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed for someone in my entire life. This is your worldview on trial, Effie. And Ru Ruhif just humiliated you. Uh, how long have they been saying that that sextants only work on flat earth and they can't even do one fix Poor guys the children uh obi-wan says for five dollars john just admit you can't do it and stop trying to deny that ruhif did what was required if you could have done it then you would have fail yeah that's the point and that's why they refuse There's ten thousand dollars sitting there unclaimed. Um, Micah, Micah Ray says, "Please, he is adhering to a model, a flat Earth celestial sphere model. Still requires a map to get distances to the GP of all three stars. Uh, can you ask him what map he would use? Uh, he'd use the globe map." <laughs> Because it's, it's the only one that'll work. Um, Indie Tiger Sci-Fi Review says for $20. Thank you for that one very much. It says latitude and longitude, which is the first thing you solve for in celestial navigation, is an unprojected coordinate system. Lat and long is a coordinate system for a sphere. That is true. I mean, you, you could do a coordinate transform. But yeah, you can transform them onto a map or any map, really. Yeah. yeah. That's what a projection is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Marcus Dresden. Let you t let you t cube say all of the all of the derp that he wants. Uh, Alyssum says for five dollars Australian. I'm so happy that Flurfs will never fly commercial aircraft or captain large ships. Can you imagine if the Flurfs actually in their like their cruises that they've talked about doing, if they insisted that the captains do flat earth navigation? They'd never get there. Be the headline, like a ship full of flat earthers goes missing. Uh Kira says, I'd like to find out for ten dollars. Thank you for that. It says, I'd like to find out which geometry book these flurfs are reading that tells us you can't measure an angle off a curved shape. There's no book. They just say it because it's part of their mantra. And, and it's a religious thing. And if you watch Nathan Oakley's show, you'll know it is a, a mantra that Oakley makes them go through every day. Five days a week, they have mass where they repeat the mantras that they've been told that they have to repeat. Uh, Theo Megawerty for two dollars says, "How many curvilinear horizontals do circles have? How many curvilinear horizontals? So a, a, a horizontal, you mean a curved line? Because a hor horizon is a curved line. Is that what you mean? Or like horizontal planes? Because because Either way, the answer is infinite. Every position on, on uh, a, a circle, as your question asked, every position on a circle in their infinite positions has, has its own horizontal or perpendicular to 
the, the line from the radius to the edge. Uh, Shovelhead Steve says, did someone forget to tell him he lost already? <laughs> yeah, I, they're they're going to declare victory. Of course they will. Of course they, they will. will. I look forward to tomorrow's episode. <laughs> they will be declaring victory after their their ship sank. Yep. Um, <clears throat> all right. PhD Tony says, in the limit, which which is uh, all continuous differential curves are straight. He was talking about this. Yes. So when you take the limit, yes. Uh, three Ron says for five dollars. Fifth grade must have been super hard for uh, for this flurf. All three attempts. Could be. Earth is life says so. I guess we can't build houses on the side of mountains since we can't get angles from a curved surface. Apparently not. Uh, he, he he thinks as soon as you touch the Earth, it must be flat and no topography. Is that right? Uh, Jason Kolosik, Kolosik, or if I get that wrong, says for seven Canadian, just how long a shadow are you trying to measure? Unless the shadow is miles long, the shadow on a flat versus slightly curved surface will be the same. Yeah, and they, they miss, they miss that. Uh, Oakley does the same thing when he talks about Alberundi, Alberuni, which is in it, that, uh, he says that, uh, because Alberuni the way that he measured the height of the mountain didn't include the radius of the earth. He, he therefore declares uh, uh, incorrect things. All that would do yeah. is introduce a very slight margin, uh, margin of error. I, I challenge, uh, they, they put forward Adam Meakin as the, uh, the resident mathematician on the FED panel. Really? I challenged Adam Meakin. <laughs> I challenged him to actually work out um, how much the error is. Uh, given the the uh, measurements that he made, and I worked it out, and it ended up being like six feet or something, yeah, like a six feet error in the height of the mountain, and yeah. then challenged him to incorporate that six feet error into his horizon measurement, and it, it just makes zero yeah. difference. Yeah, your margin of error is yeah. is uh, is is larger than that six feet when you're doing. Yes, this yeah, when you when you convert it to the the horizon angle measurement, yeah, yeah. That they they like to demand absolute perfection and zero margin of error in measurements. Yeah. They, a lot of them don't even realize that margin of errors exist in measurements. Every measurement, yeah. Every single measurement has a margin of error, and, and uh, many times I've had people on here declare that that I'm that I don't understand measurements because I know that there are margin of errors. Nathan mm. Thompson, for example. Uh, Bendy Light says for refracted. That's for John. How did you determine the R value for your celestial <laughs> sphere? And where's the other half of the sphere located in relation to the flat Earth? It's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because if, if it's flat Earth with, with a sphere, there's half of it gone. Yet all the stars are in the sphere. Where did they go? William Foley yeah, for and, $5. And like I said, actually, oh. like I said, his plane, if the Earth is flat, where he chops off his plane has to be parallel to my plane, yet yes. I see different stars. Yes. It doesn't work. Uh, William Foley says, the only thing flurfs have is arrogance, sophistry, and lies. Yeah. They, they maybe have a few other things. Uh, Humphrey Pushcart, I love that name, for $6.66 says, this is painful. It's like describing purple to someone whose dogma of color cannot be, cannot move beyond blue. Wolfgang Polly, that's not even wrong, weeps. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's dogma. Yes. All this geometry stuff is, is not based on any geometric evidence or proof or analysis. It's just because they've heard it so many times, they it's incorporated into their psyche and they, they just repeat it as if it's an absolute truth, but they've never actually gone through that. Alyssum says, hey, Flair, how do you calculate the distance between any two locations on Earth? Sailors and pilots rely on these. 
why is there no flat earth based method yes that is the key thing drawing circles of equal altitude how do you know that like if you start at your gp and and draw a, a line off to some point a thousand nautic miles away what are the coordinates that you, that you end up with it, it, it needs to be a circle but on on any flat earth projection it's not a circle correct so they they can never get them to intersect uh anywhere close to reality <clears throat> so i i intentionally chose southern hemisphere uh positions for oh, this nice. <laughs> because and if if he were to try which i doubted that he would then an ae projection would would mess it up so uh i love this one Ruh, if you will room 237 says Ruhif's ship successfully successfully reaches shore while towing John in a dinghy. Oh, Ruhif, that was nice that you saved, saved yeah. him. I'm disappointed in 11 kilometers. I thought I was closer than that. So anyway, I, I don't think it was in my circle, in my triangle. I think it was just slightly outside, I think. I'll have oh, to really? check it out later. Um, it could be in one of the corners, maybe. I guess you could you could yeah. analyze it and see where, uh, where yeah. it was off. And uh, I, I did not tell him anything. I, I kept. I felt I'm like, you're on your own, buddy. And, uh, yeah, and that that it. part of it, the secrecy part. I mean, is is not really useful given that I've demonstrated how to do it, rather than just being given the answers. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. anybody so can plug the, it into an online one. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not. Yeah. So uh, Inquisitor Rurik says for $5, congratulations, John, you have lowered the audience IQ by at least five points. Was this your master plan? Make everyone else your intellectual equal? I think he'd need more than five IQ point drop to make that happen. Aaron Reese says for dollars <laughs> blink twice if you're being held hostage by flurfs. This was, this was fun. Um, poor John. I mean, if, if, you know how, um, Cheswick got in trouble by all the flurfs for not uh, debating well against FDFE, John should, and I don't know if they're going to be smart enough to realize how much he destroyed Flat Earth. I'm really looking forward to see how they spin it tomorrow. That'll be it's, fantastic. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's probably going to be a lot of talks about geometry that they don't understand. Yeah. Geometry, he didn't bring any geometry. Like I, those questions that I had at the end, I gave those questions to him a couple of days ago. So these are the questions that I would like you to answer. Yeah. Because I know that you can't answer them because they don't work on flat earth. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Scott Stratford for $2 says he's not incorrect, just dishonest. Very true. Dana Almo says, and I love this, this word that was invented, agnorant. Agner. Perfect description. Tommy Gronvold for 50 and Nokia's says step by step by teaspoon, the patience of Ruhif is legend. Wait for it. Dairy. What? Your patience is legend. Dairy. Okay. He, he wanted to pause in Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Uh, many Karen says for 15 shekels. Is the, he like a record stuck on the same spot? I will not buy this flurf. It's scratched. <laughs> it was set in the sun. It's got a, 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 a wave on it. A Saeed Ahmed for $5 says, Ruhif Bravo. How you managed to keep your wits intact was brilliant. Well done. Very, very good job. Uh, Saeed Ahmed again comes for $5. What's more pathetic, John trying to turn this debate into a Nathan Oakley dumpster fire or purposefully misunderstanding Ruiz? The answer, yes. Why not both? <laughs> William Foley says for $5, the more John argues the trivial stuff, the weaker his position becomes. He's scared to agree with Ruiz on anything. Yep. It's not, they weren't trick questions. David says for $5, this flirt fl soiled his pants in the first five minutes and then spent an hour trying to change his shirt. <laughs> Dude, your pants are soiled. Why are you changing your shirt? 
Joe Kovacs says for $5, if John or 10th man were navigators, people would die. SS Oakley sank with all hands lost. Yeah, they, they'd sit there instead of actually doing the work, they'd sit there talking about geometry that they don't understand. At least they died on a flat plane, though. But they did in their own minds. They did. Good yeah. for them. Well, under it. Down mm -hmm. in the water. Anyway, Ian Dust says for five dollars because he's ignorant of the topic. He's afraid of ev He's afraid every question is a trick question. To think he claimed that he took calculus. Yeah, that was that gave him away big time. Yeah. Did he say electrical engineering and he mechanical his, engineering? He claimed two degrees in, I think, electrical and something else. I think the other one was mechanical, I think. Oh. But yeah. I mean, Literally, the, was it year nine? When did you do calculus? A bit later, isn't it? In, in where? In high school. In America, in high school, you would only take calculus if you're in the advanced uh, classes. So normal classes, okay. you, you take uh, algebra two years of algebra one year of geometry in high school four years of high school then then that's all that's mandatory at least in minnesota a lot of states are the same and then your senior year you can opt to take a, a math class and in minnesota it was called um analysis when i went through which is kind of a pre-calc uh but okay. it doesn't do calc um i took calculus in high school and then when i did go to university i took a full year of calculus and then a, then a bunch of engineering math and matrices differential equations i think things like that i think you do calculus probably in year 10 then and i think well sorry you, you do like the differentiation in year 10 and then i think year 11 electively you do integration and various yeah okay various applications of it well that's good we we typically American students would not get that far. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, three runs. Says Tune, he didn't fail eighth grade geometry because he never made it to eighth grade geometry. Seriously, that person's so so pathetic. Uh, you it's literally the first thing you do in in calculus is is yeah. get the slope of fucking y equals x squared or whatever. And and to just go on and on that you can't measure those angles. Yeah. Uh, Yadawat twenty four says measuring the angle of elevation using the shadow of the obelisk on a perfectly level surface. The percent of error flat Earth and globe zero point zero zero one three five percent. Yeah. So zero. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. It's it's below your margin of error of measurement. Mm -hmm. Ian Dust says for five Australian, I think you've earned yourself a stiff drink, sweetheart, after that slaughter. That's for you, Rudolf. Thank you. Uh, it's a bit early in the day. Maybe you want to wait later. No, it's after 12. It's after 12. I got to have a uh, cocktail All right, you're and good a steak. Then. Ben Thurston for $1. No message. Thank you for that, Ben. Uh, Robert Gillis for $6.66 is the devil's pocket chain. Uh, Technics one says, uh, I'm amazed he even agreed with anything. Well done. I was surprised he did, but when he was just going to punt. Jiffy Cone says, Johnny Oaf for $2 says, Earth is flat. So Jiffy Cones wanted me to say that about Johnny Oaf. <laughs> it's Johnny Oaf, John. Robert Gillis uh, for $1.99, no message. Thank you for that. Obi-Wan for $5 says that was his approach all along. Let Ruhif do all the work, then claim it used flat earth. Never plan to do it some, them, uh, himself. Next time, Flurf goes first. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Stanton for $5 says if, if he is an engineer, he would have had a visual presentation and not on his phone saying, nah uh. We got Theo Megawerty for two dollars. Says Earth cannot have Earth cannot have a radius. I think flat Earth cannot have a radius. Globes can, certainly globes can. And you used it, Ruhif. I did. You gotta have R for that, and you used it. Mm -hmm. uh, Many Karen for fifteen shekels says Oakley Dictionary housekeeping verb, repeating idiot 
idiotic dogma five days a week. And final one from your your countryman Hugh Jars. A champion. Two ninety nine. <laughs> Ruhif wa uh, rocks. Flat Earth dead on arrival again. And that thank is you. The, that is the final one. Um, Ruhif, thank you so much. Thank you for sticking around oh. a little longer. Um, that was that was epic. Um, John, the not engineer, he exposed yes. himself. Um, so the, can, can, can you post Ruhif's last, to last graph. graph? Um, I can do that on the page, but it will be after the next debate or maybe during, I could do it. I'll put up a couple of your slides on the, the page here, uh, mc2.net slash CELNAV, CELNAV. Anything you want to say, Ruhif, as, uh, as we... uh, just to reiterate that he failed the basic challenge of the of the challenge, yeah, of the debate. So Show that it works on your model by way of worked example, and he never planned to do it because he knows that it can't work by by flat earth. That's it. All right, everybody. Uh, we'll see you in just a couple minutes, long enough to go uh, take a Riley and uh, fire up the next one with uh, Shane and Dr. Phil Bell. So we'll get another Australian. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you in a bit. Cool. See you. One more, one more super chat from Wayward Sailor. I'll read it. it. Says we're still live. It says no flat Earth navigation. Big surprise. Thank you, Wayward Sailor. Oh three.